Okay, let's get to these questions here. So, paragraph one begins with this sentence. Hercules is, in order to complete his quest, had to get three golden apples. Why did Hercules go on this, re on this quest? If I go to the introduction, I'm going to read through just quickly from here to here. I'm going to find out why in the world did he have to go on these labors that they call them. Why did he have to even start to get the apples? Oh, but I remember I wrote what crime did he commit? So let's go back to that question mark. It says, after he commits a terrible crime, he is sentenced to 12 tasks or labors to atone. Guys, remember what atone means? To make things right. We learned that in Bible. To make things right. So he has to make things right. <clears throat> so I'm going to write in complete sentences, Hercules has to go on this quest. Because, now I'm going to write exactly what it says. Because he commits a crime, and is sentenced to 12 tasks in order to make things right. Number two, recall our vocabulary words from prior weeks. What does burden some mean? I'm going to let you answer that question, but we're going to start off our sentence with burden some means, then you finish it. Number three. Why do you think Hercules hesitated to take the sky for Atlas? <gasps> Didn't we write something like that in our annotations? Why did Hercules hesitate? Hmm. I would say whatever you wrote for your annotations, right here, you got your answer down. Number four, look at paragraph 12. Using evidence, make an inference on how Atlas feels after placing the sky on Hercules' shoulders. If I go to paragraph 12, it, we already wrote our annotations. This is why annotations are so important. Atlas is filled with joy and relief. But I need to make an inference. So I'm going to say, and I have to use evidence. So, after placing the sky on Hercules' shoulders, Atlas begins to, what does he begin to do? 
What does he begin to do? Look back at paragraph 12. What does he begin to do? He begins to caper. I'm going to put quotes because I'm, I'm using quotes. He begins to caper and dance. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. He begins to caper and leap and dance for joy at his freedom. That, this is my evidence. Remember, evidence is something directly stated in the text. So this is my evidence. So based on this evidence, I can say, so based on this evidence, based on this evidence, Atlas, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to include something. So based on this evidence, I infer that Atlas feels, now you tell me, what does Atlas feel? We wrote this in our notes. If you have anything to add on, finish this sentence here. I infer that Atlas feels what? Now, paragraph 5. Stop at paragraph 19. Remember, that's where we stopped for today. You do not have to continue on anymore. Make a prediction. Do you think Atlas will take back the sky? Why will he or why will he not? I'm going to say Atlas will take back the sky because, or if you don't think that he will, then you can write Atlas will not take back the sky because pink. So on one end, you could say, yeah, Atlas will take back the sky. Atlas is polite and he's kind. And he even offered to do this task in the first place. I don't think that Atlas has any bad feelings towards Hercules. In fact, I think Atlas is a pretty good guy. Yes, he will take back this guy. And you can give other reasons why you think that Atlas would take back this guy. Maybe it's just you think that it's the right thing to do. Um, what are your thoughts? Now, if you're on the opposite end, and you say, no, Atlas will not take back this guy. Why? Maybe because he's been doing it for a thousand years, and so he's going to take advantage of Hercules and trick him. Atlas could totally do that. Um, you could say, like, you know, Atlas just loves his freedom. He lo he's free. He's not burdened anymore. Yeah, there's no, no way that he's going to take back that sky. So whatever you think, go ahead and write it there. Once you have finished with this, I do implore you, take, you know, take another second or a moment or two. We're going to finish our lesson six, and then we will be done, aside from a journal entry. All right, lesson six isn't going to take as much time. Um, so first, what we want to do, always, 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 we're going to put our name. and the date. Oops. Okay. 
So our context clues chart, we've done this several times before. It should be a bit simple for us. And I've already filled in the first. So we have our words here. We're going to use our context clue, so we'll write the sentence the word is found in. And then we're going to make a definition based on what we think the word means. And then we're going to use a dictionary to determine what the word actually means, okay? So we have mortal, which is in paragraph 5. When I get to the word, I want you... I want you to read the sentence for me out loud, okay? So ready, and I hope you're doing this or else this might be silly on my part. So ready, and begin. Okay, I hope to have heard your voices. So it says, if any mortal was capable of holding up the sky, it was Hercules. So for the definition, I wrote down a man, any, a man, like if any man was capable of holding up the sky, it was Hercules. But then when I look it up online, it says that it is a human being that lives and dies. So a mortal is some, it, it, it typically refers to somebody that is immortal, means they can never, ever, ever die. And if somebody that is mortal, it's somebody that can live, but dies. So, we would consider ourselves mortal, because, you know, we don't live forever, we do die. But, in the context of Jesus, with Jesus' blood, we have a mortal blood running within us, so we will never, ever die. So, that's, that's something really cool. But, that's what mortal means. So let's go to subsided. This word is subsided. Can you say subsided? I really miss being in our classroom. Okay, go to paragraph 12. Okay, so we have it here in the very last sentence. So when I, when I say ready and begin, you're going to read the sentence for me, okay? Get ready and begin. Okay, so when his joy had a little subsided, he stepped into the sea. Okay, so what do you think subsided means? So he was really, really, really happy. And then when his joy subsided, he stepped into the sea. So what does subsided mean? All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and write your definition. I think that subsided means, I think that it means to, like, to die down. I guess it means to die, like, like, you know, like you have so much energy and then you start to die down. I think it might also mean to decrease. Or, I think it means like, like it went away. So, like when his joy went away, he stepped into the sea. When his joy decreased, he stepped into the sea. Let's see what... Let's see what... what subsided means. So I'm going to go here. Okay. So it says become less intense, violent, or severe. Oh, and it says that a synonym is to calm. To calm. Hmm, that's interesting to soften or to weaken, to decline. These are all very interesting definitions. I think I'm going to say that it means to become less intense.
All right, now what I want you to do is you are going to think what is, what do you think the definition of anxious is? And then either going to dictionary.com or using a dictionary at your house, I want you to look up what anxious is. Now I have you know that anxious has sort of like two different meanings. So make sure that you kind of take that into account on what is the right meaning for this context, okay? All right, we have finished our task for ELA today. We have annotated our text, we have finished our questions, and we have done our lesson six. So by this time, I, I just want to applaud you. That was an amazing, amazing job. Um, if I were you, I would take maybe like an hour break and do some other tasks. I mean, depending on what your parents are telling you. If they're, they're telling you you need to sit down from this time to this time, then by all means, listen to them. Um, but, you know, by this time, I'm sure that you've already done your math. If you did math first. Um, and you had your ELA done. So I would just kind of, you know, take a break, maybe go on Prodigy, sit down and read a book, um, you know, exercise, do something a little active. And then I would suggest for you to come back and do your journal entry and your reading log a little bit later in the day. Um, you know, get done, do your handwriting. You can even do your handwriting right now. That will only take you like five minutes. Um, and then make sure you check back in later so that we can do our Bible together. So I hope that you are having a really good day. I hope that this wasn't overwhelming for you. Um, if you have any questions, please, please, please reach out. I'm praying for you. And I can't wait for to, to, to see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye.